Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Business leaders this week met with President Soro Ramaphosa to brief him of sector strategies that could help raise investment and create jobs. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the developments. Hi Terence. Hi Sanal. What message was delivered to the President by business? Well, I think that uh, there was, there's been an initiative called the Public Private Growth Initiative and they are starting to brief the President, or did this week, on some of the planning that they're doing over the five-year horizon, basically to respond to his Tumamina call, looking at you know, how we can raise investment in the economy, which has been low for quite some time, as well as to stimulate high levels of growth and job creation. And uh, the, during this briefing, a, a number of sectors presented, um, r ranging from manufacturing and the opportunities that reside within that sector, and construction, which we know is in the doldrums and is struggling, through to uh, uh, all other manner of sectors, aerospace, um, renewable energy, and automotive. And really, I think the template really comes out of the automotive sector. I think the sector type uh, approach is devised from a Japanese model of, uh, for growth stimulation in that economy. And that the sort of a thinking has come out of Toyota's uh, Johan van Zyl. And uh, really looking at coordinating sectors and uh, partnering with government to try and get higher levels of growth in those specific sectors, higher levels of investment. We know we had that investment conference uh, in the latter part of 2018, where a number of projects were pledged and I think the idea is to really stimulate even high levels of investment, as well as partnership around specific priority areas like skills development and training. So I think the message was that we as business are ready to partner with uh, this, the South African government again. There was a breakdown in the trust relationships, especially in the latter years of the President Jacob Zuma administration. I think. Uh, the last year has been about remedying that relationship between government and business and having a more frank exchange around what needs to happen to get investment going again in the economy. And also I think uh, to say where the, the sort of gaps are as well as where the walls and inhibitors are around allowing some of that investment to take place. What was the President's response? I think it was an open ear. Yeah, I think he used the word open door, in fact, that he wants an open door relationship with business and labor, he stressed, to try and get this economy going at a much higher growth trajectory. We know it's been at a very low ebb for a number of years now. I think the projection is that we won't have grown by more than sort of 0.6% in 2018, which is dismal and below our population growth. And uh, you know the outlook for the immediate future is also fairly um, pessimistic. Even though we're going to breach the 1% level, say around 1.3, 1.4% this year or the current projection, uh, that's not really good enough to deal with the, um, the chronic problems of unemployment in our economy and the deep levels of poverty uh, and also the growing levels of inequality. And that will grow if more and more people are without work because I think that's one way of closing the gap. It's not enough. We have to do other things to close the gap, the inequality gap. But one of the important remedies is getting job create jobs in this economy, which we really are uh, have been lacking. In fact, we've seen a declining trend in terms of jobs. And to get jobs, we're going to have high, have to have higher levels of investment. And to get that high level of investment is going to require confidence. And I think you know what we've been seeing over the last few years a key building black block around that confidence is to get that trust relationship again, to get the, the two parties talking to each other again, and to be in a, on a pr sort of proactive uh, footing again. And I think then that the confidence comes to start talking about not these sort of one, two percent type levels of growth, but what business is saying to the president, what the president is saying in return, we need to get back to levels of growth of closer to five percent. We know the National Development Plan says we can't really make a dent into our big social and economic problems without between 5 and 6% economic growth. We know we're near those levels, but I think uh, you know, with these limited fiscal space, so the, the we, we know we've got high levels of debt, and we know that the state-owned enterprises, which are key levers in the past in terms of getting things going in the economy, particularly around infrastructure, have got high levels of debt and uh, sort of are at their limits. And we know that the monetary space is also constrained in terms of being able to do too much more with interest rates. 
Therefore, it's really about you know, partnering with the private sector, trying to get in third-party capital, third-party energy and ingenuity and, uh, into the economy. And that's really, I think, uh, um, why Sir Ramaphosa has labelled growth as his number one priority. What do you think the prospects are for generating higher levels of growth? Well, I think the recent past has been really dismal and abysmal. And I think that uh, we really are at the bottom. But it's going to take quite a lot of heavy lifting to get us moving again. I think confidence is one thing, but it's not really enough, as the World Bank said recently in its report. It, the, we, we saw an uptick in confidence when Sir Ramaphosa replaced um, Jacob Zuma last year. But that really didn't give us the growth kick that we were hoping for. So we're going to have to take, yes, that confidence, but also to, uh, to really take hands and work hard and I think a big part of getting us out of this, uh, uh, the current slump is really going to be about uh, you know, taking away some of the really silly policies that are in place. It's not just about policy certainty, which is very important, but actually dealing with some of the policy constraints around spectrum, for instance, still in the mining sector, there are issues there, um, still definitely around electricity, there are constraints. And then in tourism, which is a low-hanging fruit and everyone acknowledges, you know, really dealing with some of these uh, th things like visa policies that, you know, have sort of been sorted out but not really nailed and nailed down. So I think really getting to grips with where are the gaps still and sorting those out once and for all. And then once we have, and then sustaining policy certainty over a longer horizon so that businesses in these different sectors, such as, for instance, renewable energy, we saw when, when the program was going at a sort of good clip, uh, there was local uh, investment in localization, in local content, in factories. Now those factories have closed because we had a hiatus of a couple of years, and now it's very hard to get components for your wind and solar farm from local South African factories because of, you know, not just policy uncertainty, because the policy didn't change, but lack of policy implementation. And I think there's a feeling that the focus has to be on implementation now and actually doing things together. And I think the, uh, you know, they, they dusted off the old Deng Xiaoping quote, uh, in fact, Minister Ibrahim Patel did this week, around, you know, getting into the water and feeling your way, feeling the rocks under your feet as you move forward. And rather than trying to have perfect policy and perfect solutions before we do anything. So I think if we are going to get to high levels of growth, it's going to be about taking action rather than doing lots more talking. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.